Hello guys, it's Shit Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and here we are once again. <laughs> and today I bring you a free software and I repeat free software that you can use to do the same things that you do with process lasso basically configure your cpu cores and threads which applications use which threads and so on so on so on and in some case scenarios depending on your hardware even get more fps in games do it first of all i need to state that i saw this software in a video from jay's descent because someone actually linked the video and told me that this was so this was a very nice software and from what i took from this video from his video it seems that uh, the software was made by one of his viewers and is called CPU, uh, CPU Set Setter. And if you go to GitHub or if you search on Google, of course, the GitHub link will appear and it is here, CPU Set Setter. What it does, dual CCD 3D Vcash CPUs like the 9550X 3D, 9900X 3D, 7950X 3D and 7900X 3D have two kinds of cores. The cache cores, which is the CCD0, which has more cache and is great for gaming. And then we have the frequency cores, the CCD1, higher clock speeds, better productivity and background tasks. Okay, so... For this video, I'm using the 9900X 3D and I'll show you some specific scenarios in real time uh, of where the performance can go up and down depending on what you want. But what I really want to show you before this is today's sponsor that has some really, really interesting Black Friday deals. Believe me. Today's sponsor is FlexiSpot with the FlexiSpot E7 Pro. We're talking about a premium desk that lets you choose its height, basically working as a normal desk or a standing desk in case you want to stretch your legs a bit. To control its height, you have a display that shows its current height, counting from the floor, which includes preset buttons and a USB Type-A for charging. And they now made it even better, so instead of having USB Type-A, you now have USB Type-C. Again, better charging, faster charging, much better. And since the height is adjustable, issues like the monitor not being at eye level or the chair not fitting below the desk aren't there anymore, as you can always adjust the desk with the press of a button. It also brings a cable organizer to keep most of your cables away from the floor and a rigid magnet cover that serves the purpose of hiding and organizing the remaining cables, such as the ones coming from the desk's electric motor. And of course, you can customize the desk depending on your taste and needs, from the tabletop and keyboard models to a huge amount of accessories that you can pick from. I myself have two of these and I've been using one for a long time, so I can indeed state that the FlexiSpot E7 Pro is an outstanding product in terms of quality and usability. Build your own setup with FlexiSpot to get a discount and use the link below with the code YTE730 to get $30 off on the E7 and E7 Pro standing desks. And we're talking about discounts up to 80% off and in many, many products like the E5, the, E5, the E7 Plus. So if you want to check them out, you will help the channel by clicking the link in the description. But well, let's now continue. And by the way, I'm doing this because Jay's two cents actually showed the performance differences here with CPU set better, but he actually showed the CPU differences in between cache and, and frequency cores in a situation where, where he was GPU bottlenecked. And that's, that's nonsense because that's the same as saying that the Ferrari and the Mini can hit the same top speed just because, um, just because a truck is in front of each one of them. If, he, if a truck is in front of one of them, they will be having the same speed. But as soon as the trucks just go away, the Ferrari will be much faster. And the trucks are the GPU bottleneck here. So the GPU is there and doesn't really allow the CPU to stretch its legs, let's say. So there won't be any differences, but they exist. And I'll show you. So downloading CPU set better, you can just download it, then you kind of extract the folder, the, the RAR file or the zip file, and then you have this folder CPU set better. Then you open the software, which is pretty easy to use, to be honest. Then we have the applications running right now, and you can search the applications running right now, or going, for example, for the average, average CPU usage for the path, creation time, and so on. And as soon as you go to the settings, these ones won't be here. So the frequency, 3D cache, and so on, these are ones that I created. So let's say that you want to create one for the 3D cache. The 3D cache is only on the first CCD. You just go here, and let's say call it 3D, oh my bad, 3D cache. Just add, and you just unselect all the cores from the second CCD. So this is 12 cores, 24 threads, 
meaning that, um, that the first 12 threads are in CCD0, which is the one that has the 3D cache, and the others from 12 to, to, <laughs> to, 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 from 12 to 30, 30, Jesus, from 12 to 23, they are on the second CCD, which is the frequency one. So we want, in terms of gaming performance, we want this to be, of course, the, um, the one that's being used. Then we have the frequency that I also created. As you can see, the frequency uses only the CCD1 instead of the CCD0. And then I have the full, which is kind of the normal for you guys to see the differences. Going to the processes, as you can see, you don't really need to add any kind of process because as soon as you open a game or something else, the process will appear here. So the first game I'm gonna show you is Homeworld 3, a really CPU heavy title. So we're running 1440p and again, this is 1440p high settings no upscaling whatsoever, and let's just go and run the benchmark for you to see how things work. Now, these CPUs, the 9000 series, they usually tend uh, to have better better chipset drivers, and they, they usually perform better in terms of CPU bound scenarios than their, the previous 7000 series, where the chipset drivers just don't help much. So, for the 7000 series, this is, is even more needed. Now, as soon as you go here, you can see immediately that we have Homeworld there, on the, on the average CPU. And as you can see, all cores are being used, all cores and threads. We have 24 threads being used, but, that, but as you can see, we went as down as 60 FPS. 60 FPS, and as you can see, the GPU usage and the power draw were really, really low. So minimum frames of 59.69. Now, from the moment I go here to the Homeworld 3, and I go out and I make the system use, oh my bad, and I make the system use the 3D cache, as soon as I go into the game, you can see that the usage that we had in the previous course, it is basically really, really low now. And you can see on the minimums, we went from 59 to 80. The instability, sorry, that we have here is most likely due to the recording. So just to avoid that, I stopped recording with OBS and I started recording with Adrenaline, with the MD software. Let's now run the benchmark and see how it goes. I know it still has a bit more stutters in the beginning, but, but, but as you can see, way better. Remember that we dropped to 59 FPS while using the full CPU. Eighty-seven, eighty-nine, And here we are, minimum of 76, from 59 to 76 or 80, depending if you are recording or not. But yeah, much, much better. Another thing is when you run the benchmark, as you can see, for example, if we're using the 3D cache, we're running around 97, 98 watts, 95, depends. If we give it the option to use everything, we go to higher power. So we're not only using, uh, we're not only getting lower FPS, but at the same time, we use more power on the CPU side. If we go to the frequency side, the FPS drop immediately. If we go to the 3D cache side, bam, as you can see, much, much higher FPS. And uh, the power consumption is, well, it's still a bit lower. So it's a win-win, lower power consumption usually because you're just using one CCD and much better gaming performance because you're using only the CCD with 3D cache. And now you might ask, well, but why using the CCD, the CCD one is really, really bad. Why not use both? Why can't you use the CCD with 3D cache and the CCD without 3D cache? So in theory, more is better. It would be better definitely if there wasn't latency issues. We are using two core complexes. Well, not really CCX, but I mean, two places where the cores are, so one CCD here, another here, in order to have them communicating in between themselves, it creates latency. And since we only have 3D cache on the first one, going the back, back and forward, back and forward, it will create latency. And uh, the benefits of the 3D cache will kind of be, well, kind of be taken away by the latency issues. So what you want is to have the 3D cache without the latency issues, and that will deliver the best gaming performance that you can get. Now we're running Cyberpunk 2077, and I'm running Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p high settings. And of course, you can run it at ultra, you can run with ray tracing and so on. Of course, we are indeed at 1440p, and we are recording and so on. So unless we start getting more and more NPCs, the difference that we'll see here in terms of performance isn't really that much, especially with the CPU as fast as the 9900X. But you can see the difference. For example, 
if you look here, you can see that, um, that the CPU or that the system is using the first CCD, as you can see from the core one or the thread one to the thread 12, everything is being used most likely for the game. But if you look at the thread 17 and 18, they're being used as well. And I don't really know why, I don't really know if they're being used by the game or not, but I can show you one thing that that's really easy to see. So as soon as I go, uh, as I leave the window, all the cores will, will start getting, getting used. 80, 81 FPS. And we're talking about 1440p, at 1080p it would be much more. Or if I had a GPU more powerful like the 5080 or the 5090 or the 4090, the difference would be even bigger. Now, as soon as I move to the frequency CCD, which is the second one, look at the FPS tanking down from 89 to 83, 82. But as soon as I go to the 3D cache CCD only, and I push the cores to be used, look at the difference, 109, 110. And there is one thread that is still being used, but the difference is minimal. So again, if the full CPU is being used, you lose because of latency, you lose performance, and you go down to 83, 84 FPS. But as soon as you focus on the 3D cache, you go up to 110. So if you are really thinking about it, going from 110, from 87, I would say, we're talking about a 26% difference. 26 is a lot. But to be honest, the chipset drivers will control this. Usually, not always, but usually. For example, if I go here and I just put it on the normal mode, as you can see, all the cores are being used. But as soon as the game goes to first plan, you can see I clicked on it, immediately everything goes up and only the threads 17 and 18 are being used. This shouldn't really happen, so the, 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 the threads 17 and 18 shouldn't be used, and again we went down to 96, 90, 70. Now Counter-Strike 2 is a very good example, because the last time that I tested the 7900X 3D, we would have the same exact scenario with the 7900X 3D, again this is the 9900X 3D, and the chipset drivers are different, the fundamental thing about these CPUs are different because the 3D cache is also on the bottom of the CPU instead of being on the top of the cores, so latencies, chipset drivers and so on, everything changed, and the 9900X 3D seems to be using only the first CCD automatically. And that's why you see the performance basically topping at 1440p low settings, basically topping the performance of the 7900XTX. And we are GPU bottlenecked in fact. Now what happens is that with some CPUs like the 7900X3D, we would have the same situation as we have with Cyberpunk 2077, with one or two threads from the other CCD being used, making the performance go down as much as half. So instead of having 500 FPS or 600, you will have like 300, 300 and something because those two threads were being used and they shouldn't, at least for games like Counter-Strike 2. In this case scenario, it seems to be fixed. Now, if you go out of it and let's say that we're using the full CPU and even if we go full CPU, as you can see, the chipset drivers just ignore what I'm, what I'm telling them to do. If we go to the frequency CCD, and I go there, it still ignores because the chipset drivers are made to use the first CCD. Now, in theory, in terms of performance, if you used only the first CCD is the best that you can get and that's why you have this performance. But well, this all to say that if you're seeing some threads being used outside of the first CCD and if you have a Ryzen 9 CPU, especially the Ryzen 9 X 3D CPUs, if you have a 7900X 3D like I saw before, uh, using, for example, the thread 17 or 18, or maybe two of the threads like 21 and 22, just go use CPU set better, go uh, raise or use the 3D cache, uh, the, the 3D cache CCD only, and you'll see that your performance will get much, much better. In those scenarios where I was testing the CPU, again, it was almost double the performance from the moment I went and kind of locked the first CCD only. And you can do this with Windows. If you go here, for example, to the um, to the details, and if you go to, 
let's say Counter-Strike 2, you can just go here, set affinity, and you can select the course. The thing is that it doesn't save your affinity. While with softwares like this or uh, Process Lasso, for example, and this is basically what Process Lasso does, for things like these, um, yeah, it just saves it, and if you just quit the game and go again inside the game, it will save your options, which is great. And that's why software like this is actually useful. And now you saw that in terms of gaming, it can make the difference in terms of frame rates, especially if I was using a slower CPU like the 7900X3D, it would make even higher or bigger difference since the CPU is slower, the latency will matter much more and blah, 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 blah. You know the drill. So if on the 9900X3D, you can already see some differences on the 7900X3D, the difference will be even better. And the same applies for the 16 cores, 32 threads variants. Now, just as a final touch, and I know this is a very specific situation, imagine that you want to do some 3D rendering by the grace of gods while playing some games, and you want to do 3D rendering just with your CPU. Or if you're rendering a video with a CPU, or if you're just recording with your CPU, these all, these situations, they all apply. Now, look at the performance. From the moment I go here and I go to render, render image, look at how the performance just goes down, Basically, yep, the game is unplayable. If we go here, look at the performance, the CPU is, is at 100% and we have 75, 73, 75 FPS. And if we move, uh, yeah, the experience is a bit stuttery, now even more 64, 63. Because of course, we're using a lot of threads. Now, what you can do is you can go here and just, for example, make Blender use the frequency CCD and make the game use the 3D Cache CCD. And on this case scenario, you're still using basically the, the top of your CPU, but instead of 60 FPS, you're having 90. You're having much better performance, you're still using the, CC, the, um, the CPU, sorry, you're still using the CPU, but you, you are actually able to play while doing some Blender cycles with your CPU, because again, you are able to just put Blender using the frequency, the frequency CCD, so the CCD1, and the game using the CCD0, so the performance will be considerably better. Instead of having 50 or 60 FPS, you are now having around 70 something, which, while doing Blender cycles, is much better than anyone can expect. So as you can see, every single thread from the thread 13 to the 24 is being used nearly at 100% or at 100%, but the CCD, the, the CCD0, the thread 1 to 12, which again is the CCD0, is being used only at around 80%. This thing in terms of the... Um, of the um, of the cores and so on. This also serves for many other things. You can just go and make Blender just use four threads and you just go to game and make it use four threads and you can game while doing the Blender cycles. It also works in any CPU, but generally in terms of performance, it will be better utilized when you're having two CCDs and especially when you're having one CCD with 3D cache and other without it. But yeah, very useful software and most of all, it's free. Thank you very much for watching guys, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section, hope you enjoy the video and more videos will come. I took a long time to release another video because I was working at several videos, in several videos at the same time and that's why, but they will come. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Cheers.